Hello, my name's Martin Rosen and I'm a cartoonist in lockdown. Not that I, that actually means very much to me. I've been sitting at my drawing board working from home for the last 38 years. Occasionally set out to go to a newspaper office, but in my experience, as soon as you set foot inside a newspaper office, the editor will say, who's that over there? Sack them. So I just hide here. And here I am at home in what I laughingly call my studio. This sort of green womb-like space in which all the madness comes together and I create worlds because you know although we're stuck indoors you can escape using one of these. You can write stories or you can draw and you can create entire worlds and universes from that stuff inside here that mad realm behind your eyes where we romp in our dreams when we're asleep. So they've locked us down inside our houses but they haven't locked us inside our heads because there's an infinitely wide space in there. Just go for a walk, look around, see what's there and then get it out on a piece of paper and see what it looks like. And I have to say I quite enjoy working in chaos. You can see behind me uh, some of the stuff that's going on. I'm going to pick this up and see if I can uh, manage to get it in shot. There we can see my uh, dance set record player and behind that, just visible, is in that case is a stuffed vulture. A very badly stuffed vulture, actually. Um, and it sits there in a sort of formaldehyde case. I bought it by mistake at an auction some years ago. And here is my prized possession. Actually, the most important and exciting thing I own. And what it is, is a self-portrait of Thug, the pygmy hippo in London Zoo. Now, you may not know this about hippos, but they can be artists themselves because they have a tool built into their bodies which means that they can create a kind of Jackson Pollock action art and um, abstract expressionism. I don't know if you quite call it that. Having a dump is probably the more accurate way of putting it. But as hippopotamuses, both of the pygmy and the common variety, trudge their way through the African night, through the jungle, having got out of the, um, the river or lake where they live, they mark their trail by spinning their tails round like aeroplane propellers and spraying the whole of the surrounding foliage with their own shit and what the clever keepers at London Zoo did was to cut out a stencil put it on a piece of canvas and hold it behind Thug while he was doing this very thing for which hippos are famous and that my friends is mixed media it's hippo poo and fixative anyway just moving now over to my drawing board you will see the kind of chaos in which I live and which I work and uh, I like it I think it's good I think if uh, you're going to move into the realm of visual satire the last thing you need is a drawing board with your pencils laid out in priority of hardness of lead all your paints in careful little pots according to the hue along a spectrum of order no you need chaos to reflect the chaos of the world around you which is what I'm drawing and creating on a daily basis and there is my palette which is actually looking remarkably clean at the moment but um, it isn't it's actually a complete mess and quite as it should be so I'm just going to walk out here into another part of the house and this is in nominally my daughter's bedroom but uh, I've been using it as a uh, as an extra studio for a commission I've had recently and I'll just bend down there whether you can see that that's a uh, part of a triptych two triptyches I produced for a restaurant of scenes of Soho life um, it's actually a uh, and that's something produced by my daughter um, it's actually a view of Greek Street uh, as a kind of trompe loi to view on the restaurant walls um, but this is what I wanted to show you this. Isn't that great? It's these, it's these pallets just produced on piles of cardboard. 
set solid because it's acrylic paint. You'll never be able to shift that. And uh, I don't know what to do with them. I think I could probably have an exhibition of them all on their own. Um, going down the stairs, here's some of my work. This is from Gulliver's Travels, a graphic novel I did. This is a, a nasty cartoon about Oliver Twist, uh, which I did for The Independent on Sunday years and years ago. Um, here, for some reason or other, is a copy of Holman Hunt's The Scapegoat, but it's a, an image I've stolen over and over again. And uh, this is one of a series of drawings I did in 2014 to mark the centenary of the birth of Dylan Thomas, uh, which was on exhibit um, in Dylan's boathouse in Larne. And uh, here we come to my gallery of works by my great heroes. That's by David Lowe. That's an, uh, my only Lowe original, the only one I could afford, which also uh, nicely to fit in with the cartoon, of, uh, the cartoon by Thug the Hippo. It's a cartoon by Lowe about um, the Chimps Tea Party at London Zoo. And this is my Gilray. I mean, Gilray is the father of the modern political cartoon. And I could just about afford this because this was in a series produced after he died uh, by a print seller called Berm. And uh, the true aficionado will not recognise the value of this kind of thing, but it's absolutely my favourite Gilray image because... It's called Fighting for the Dung Hill, and it's what satirists always do, point out to the powerful, in this case, Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor of the world, that uh, basically he's fighting over a, pine, a pile of shit. That he may think he's the greatest man ever lived, but he shits and he will die. And uh, on that subject, this is a cartoon I did at the time of the London Olympics, um, which I was rather hoping would get me sued by the International Olympic Commission, but um, it never did, but there you go. Anyway, that's a little gallery. I'm going to take you back upstairs now, uh, back into my studio. And you can just see here a homage I did for the tercentenary of the birth of my other great hero, William Hogarth. This was originally commissioned by the BBC, though they never used it, so I had to buy the original back off uh, the corporation, who were going to sort of hide it away somewhere in a filing cabinet. Um, and the original is now on display at the Cartoon Museum. Hooray for that. And it's Hogarth's Roundabout. This is a big blow-up version of it. Um, here is the technology I use to send my stuff around to my various employers. And uh, for some reason or other, there's a coyote head with a crucifix hanging from it. Don't ask why. There's a behind next to that. There's a few bottles of um, horse's blood, which my father stole from a hospital in about 1960. And just panning round, you can see lurking in the distance, in this alcove, the grinning face of Tony Blair. <laughs> um, moving round, it's my theremin. No home should be without one. A sarcophagus I made for our children for a fancy dress party years ago. A beautiful image. Um, produced by a German PhD student who was writing her thesis on my 1996 graphic novel version of Lawrence Stern's The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy. And it's me basically going on a walk through her head. That's terrifying. Poor woman. And we just move up slightly there for a poster version of a cartoon I did of our current Prime Minister. Bless him as he recovers in number 10. And... Uh, I originally did that for the Morning Star based on that famous image of President Obama. And uh, then some uh, wicked anarchist poster makers turned it into some huge posters, which were on display um, in Uxbridge, in Johnson's constituency in uh, December 2018, um, for about 12 hours. They were up there on this huge hoarding, three of them, on the main drag, which is one of my finest achievements, I think. And then we just pan round a bit further. Um, a lamp, my wife, my stepmother and my mother, all in uh, portrait form. Uh, a very early oil painting by me over there. And uh, we get back to the full, magnificent chaos of the creative life. And I've just been filing my stuff as usual. Sending you through cartoons to The Guardian and The Mirror and The New European and occasionally stepping outside 
and thinking it's a bit quiet out here but it's a bit quiet in here as well because that's the world I inhabit and the life I lead while we watch the chaos being spread around by the people in charge but remember it's not lockdown because you've got the stuff in here you've got the stuff you can liberate yourself into you can run through fields of infinite madness inside your heads and I would invite you to do that and do it you don't have to be able to draw you don't even have to be able to hold one of these weird and magnificent things you just go for a walk and then make a mark on some paper or on the walls use some crayons use your mum's lipstick on the freshly painted walls see what happens it'll be great anyway keep safe <laughs>